Buttons are one of those little features that make a VR experience feel so much more immersive. Just think about it, hitting a button with your physical hand feels so much better than hitting some random UI element that you're pointing your hand at. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a very simple button that you can add into any VR game or any other VR experience for that matter. But before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. So before we go ahead and get started on making the actual button itself, let's actually start by messing around with the character real quick. Because there are a couple things that we're going to want to make sure of on the character side. So let me go and open up my content browser here. And if you're using anything Unreal Engine 426 or before, you'll actually have your player split into two parts. The part you want to be concerned with is your BP motion controller, not your motion controller pawn. That's gonna be your main character. Your BP motion controller pawn should contain your motion controllers for your hands. And that's really what we're concerned with. Um, if you're in anything 427 or Unreal Engine 5, then you'll have something that looks a little like this. And I believe it's called VR pawn in 427 as well. Um, but you should end up with something like this. You have your scene root, camera, motion controllers, all this. So what we really want to focus on is we want to make sure that each of our motion controllers have a collision. These motion controllers themselves don't actually have any sort of collision or anything on them um, that will actually interact with the environment like we want them to. If you're using something like a stack mesh, that'll work. I want to keep something fairly simple though for this. So I'm actually going to use a, uh, let's use a sphere collision. There we go. And you can actually see too, it's set to overlap all dynamic. We're actually going to be using, uh, we're actually going to be checking for overlap actors, if I recall, um, overlap actors in order to actually push down our button. So we want to make sure that all that's going to be all right. So let me go and also copy this. And that's going to go into our motion control right. And let me just go ahead and rename these left, collision, right collision. Now, we don't really need to do anything else beyond this point. We really just need to make sure that each of our hands have a collision that they can work with. Um, I'm actually going to scale this down a little bit as well, so that way it's a little bit more reasonable to our hands. Say 12. 12 should be about good. And this collision is going to be used to interact with our button. So I'm going to compile and save that, and that's all that we need to do to our players. Just make sure that we have some kind of collision that can interact with our button. So we're going to close all that and jump into our VR template. Now we can get to work on the button itself. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our content folder, right click, and I'm going to create a blueprints folder here. Blueprint class, and this could be an actor. I'm going to call this button. So I'm going to go and do that and take our button and we're going to end up doing a couple things here. So the way that our button is going to work is we're going to have a single collision on one side of our button that is used to push down our button, um, which we're actually going to do in the event graph, but we need to make sure that we have some things set up first. So let's actually start with our components here. First, I want to get a static mesh, and this is going to be for our actual button. Make sure that this is attached to the, stat to the default scene root and that this isn't the root component itself. You want to make sure that this can move freely within the relative space and it can't do that if it's the root component itself. So just make sure of that. Um, I'm, gonna go, I'm going to go and give this static mesh a 1M cube and we will end up scaling this down in the environment but I'm not concerned about scale here. So make sure our static mesh is, is set to something. It doesn't necessarily need to be a 1M cube. It can be whatever you'd like. Then we're going to take a Let's see here, we're going to need a cube. No, it's called square, what was it called? Collision, box collision. That's what we're gonna need, is a box collision. Uh, again, this is gonna be something that may vary depending on your static mesh. What we're going to end up doing is bring this up, and I actually know the dimensions of this cube. It's actually, if I recall, it's 100 by 100 by 100. Uh, so I actually want to bring this up maybe about 51.5. And I want to set this that way. It's just roughly on top of the surface of the cube, so it's just a ver so it's just very slightly over that. So I'm going to go ahead and take our box extent. Um, we're going to bring it to 50 by 50 on the x and y, and then our z I'll bring to maybe a one. Yeah, one should do just fine. And you can see that just barely covers 
the surface of our cube there. It's just very slightly raised up and that's not a problem. It's pro it, it should be moving fast enough that in most cases we shouldn't be able to stick our hand straight through the button anyways. So it being a little bit raised up is not that bad. Um, so let me go and bring in my camera speed again. Now I want to bring in one more thing. Um, also make sure your box is attached to the stack mesh. I almost forgot about that. Um, I want to bring in one more thing and this is just for our own sake. I'm going to bring in a arrow component and this is going to be attached to our default scene root. Oh, I don't want to make that our default scene root. I want to make sure that was attached. Um, it's already attached though, so we're all good. And we're going to have this that way it actually shoots up and it will give us a representation of how high and low our button is able to move. Um, most of the arrow is probably not going to be visible to you, but that's honestly fine. Um, so let me actually go and start by rotating this. I believe it's 90 Y. Yes, it is. So 90 Y. Um, and then that's all that we need to do on the component side there. So now let's get started with actually working on our code here. So I'm not gonna jump into the event graph first. I actually wanna use our construction script first because there's a few things that I think are just better to set up beforehand, make sure they're set up once we bring in the button. Um, so, cause it also gives us a nice visual to see how everything is working. So I wanna start by creating a variable. Um, I'm just going to call this button offset. This is going to be how high the button can raise and how and how much it'll be able to be brought down. So I'm going to make this a float as well. So we'll go and compile and save that. And starting with our arrow, I'm going to take our arrow and I'm, I want to set arrow length. And that's going to be using our button offset. So this will this will make sure that our arrow comes up to the center of our button itself and we'll see it sticking out through the bottom. So we'll be able to see how how high up and down it can come. Um, and then for a static mesh, I also want to take this and I want to set relative location. Um, now I also want to bring this to note as well. We're only going to be modifying the Z location on this button. So I'm only going to bring this through to Z. Our relative location zero, uh, our relative locations for X and Y should always be zero while we're working with this. Um, and this will also just make sure that we get a nice smooth up and down motion. Now I don't think we'll actually, oh, we do actually see it in viewport, cool. So you can actually see that our arrow is already set to viewport. It actually looks like it's kind of folded in on itself because of this. I'm actually gonna give our button offset a default, maybe 50. Um, let's actually bring it up a little bit so we can actually see that arrow sticking out through the bottom. And you can actually see, so that's how far that our button will be able to push down to. And that's gonna be where the center of our button goes down to. Um, you may have slightly seen it when I set it to 50, um, but that should kind of give you a general idea. This arrow is not going to be visible once we actually start our scene, so you shouldn't be concerned about that. It'll all work just fine there. So now that we're all done here, now we can work on to actually pressing down our button once we overlap with it. So jumping into our event graph, I'm going to remove this begin play and actor begin overlap, and I'm only going to be using the tick for this. Uh, and this is actually going to be fairly simple. So I so. This shouldn't be too complicated. You should be able to keep up just fine. So let's go and grab our box here. This is our box collision that we originally set up. I'm going to take this. I'm going to get overlapping actors. Now, if you want at this point, you can filter out certain actors that way, regardless of whether or not they overlap, it won't interact with the button. Um, I'm going to be getting all overlapping actors, partially because we don't have any other actors that can actually overlap here. So, um, but yeah, so we're going to be getting our overlapping actors and I want to get the length. I want to see if this length is greater than zero. You can also do greater than or equal to one. That's perfectly fine as well. What this is going to do is in case you're unfamiliar with length, this just gets how many overlapping actors we have. We want to make sure that we have at least one. In this case, it should only be one or both of our hands. So that should really be all that it is. I'm going to take our event graph here our execution, I'm gonna run it through a branch, bring that up. And this Boolean is going to go into our branch here. And now at this point, we actually need to determine if we're actually pressing, um, this actually helps us determine if we're currently trying to press down the button or if it needs to come back up. So what we're gonna do is get our static mesh and I'm going to get relative location because we're gonna be modifying our current relative location in order to do this. So. I'm going to go and split this. 
Like I said, we're only gonna be working with the Z. Our X and Y should be zero the entire time. So we're only gonna be interacting with the Z. And then I want to subtract, because in this case, we're actually, we're gonna be working on the true, and this is going to be when we're trying to press it down. So subtract three, I think is a pretty good number for the most part. And then I also wanna clamp this value. So I'm going to do clamp float. Our min is going to be zero. Our max is going to be our button offset. And that's gonna go into our max. I actually just realized I wanna make that public as well so we can mess with it in the world if we'd like. Our clamp float, our final clamp float here is going to set, or actually no, we're gonna be moving our component two. Moving component two actually does interpolate the movement, so it does make it look a little bit smoother um, than what it probably would have otherwise been. So using this move component two, uh, I should probably correct. I should probably make myself clear here too. It's not going to be perfect. It won't be 100% perfect, but should be good enough that it looks pretty smooth, and we shouldn't have any issues using this. And then, as you can see, I passed our clamp float into our target relative location Z. Um, this execution node went to move, and I actually want to decrease this over time as well. I'm actually going to set this to a very small number, so 0. 0.000. Zero, 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 one. I, I wanna make sure I was pronouncing enough zeros. Um, point zero, 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 one. Uh, I found tends to be pretty good. This tends to be pretty reactive and all this tends to look pretty smooth. Maybe not perfect, but it does look pretty smooth and it will all look really nice here. Um, and now let's work on bringing our button back up. It's gonna be pretty much this exact same thing. Let me go and copy all this actually. We're only gonna be making a single change here. So let me go and bring this forward. Rather than subtract three, we're actually going to add three. Now, if you want your button to come up a little bit slower, like if you want it to kind of act as though it's got some resistance when it's coming back up, then you can come in here, you can change this value right here to make sure it comes up slower. You can also change our over time here, both of these together affect how fast the movement of our button is, which is also why I set these to what they were, which is why I set over time here to as low as it is and, uh, and our um, relative location offset to minus three. So this will actually help, th this will tend to be pretty reactive. It won't, it probably won't keep up with our hand when we pull it up, but it should come pretty close behind. So if you want it, if you want to add some kind of friction in there and make it move a little bit slower, probably decrease this value, increase our overtime over here, and now make it move a little bit slower when it comes up. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go and compile and save all that. And that is our button. So I'm gonna go and jump into our VR template now. And I'm gonna bring in our button here. And let me go and scale that down first. So let's go and scale that down. Let me lock that to 0.25, I think should be a pretty good value. And you should be able to see, we have our arrow right below. I'm gonna raise that a little bit so it's roughly my height. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a correct height or not. Bring it down a bit. Um, so that should be roughly my height, and I'm gonna go and jump into VR, and we can give this a test run. So I'm now here. I'm in VR. Um, so you should actually be able to see that I have the cube here in front of me that represents our button. So I actually did bring this a little bit lower <laughs> than I should have. I should have raised, raised it up a little bit more, like I thought I should have. Um, but you can actually see if I go and bring my hand down, you can see it comes down. It comes back up and I can do it as quickly or as slowly as I would like. And you may actually see too when it comes back up that it's actually, it, it does come up a little bit slower than my hand when I bring it up, but just ever so slightly, it, it tends to be pretty reactive with my hand. Um, and of course you can do some more modifications to it. You can increase the speed at which we're decreasing and increasing that Z value on the button. You can also uh, decrease, I think you can decrease that, um, the speed at which, it, at which it interpolates just a little bit quicker as well. Um, you can also decrease it a little bit slower if you would really like. Um, and same with when it comes up, if you'd, like, if you'd like for it to come slower, you can of course do the same modifications there in order to bring it up quicker and slower. But you can actually see, um, yeah, we, we have our button. It, it seems to work pretty well, and once it's all the way brought down, then of course there's nothing else for my hand to do but go through it. So once it's brought down all the way, then that's it, and then pick my hand back up, and there it goes. So 
there is our button in all its glory. And with that, that's how we add a very simple button into any VR experience. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like the subscribe button down below. And I also wanna give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see over here on the right hand side. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.